for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere and fall cleaning <laughs> for me up here in the Northern Hemisphere. Thank you for joining me on this video. Yes, I have a spring in my step, pun intended, even though it is a sad, sad day, but we're going to rip the band-aid off and today I'm going to show you the ones that have not made it, tell you about the mistakes I made and possibly if I were to do it all over again, what I would change. And I'm going to also start with the ones that did hurt the most when I first saw signs and symptoms that they were not going to make it. And top of the list is my Vandoglossum Alexandra. Bought because my daughter's name is Alexandra. Bloomed for me, was doing wonderful, and was is here the key word because ta-da, she gone. And the reason being stem rot. I have been watching this orchid for the past two months and I could see one leaf drop off and then another leaf drop off and the sad symptom of a leaf dropping off from the base. When a leaf starts to deteriorate at the base, you know you're in trouble. And so I decided to peel off what I could from the base just to see how bad it is because her root system still looked pretty amazing. But in the last four weeks, let's say about four weeks, this root started to desiccate. The next root here started to desiccate. And if I can get you to see the damage of the stem, the stem is completely gone. It is absolute history. So this orchid unfortunately did not make it because I was misting the mounts that were right along the wrought iron fence that I have where I've got all the mounts on it and they get misted three, four, sometimes five times a day. And this orchid was positioned at a perpendicular angle on another shelf with a lot of airflow around it. And unbeknownst to me, residual mist kept hitting her. I had no idea it was happening until one day I thought I'm going to put a camera there and film this and see what's going on. And sure enough, Vanda Glossom got hit with mist and she didn't appreciate it. So if I were to repeat this with another Vanda Glossom, I would definitely make sure this orchid was never in the line of fire of misting. I cannot believe it. During the warmest months of the year, with a lot of airflow, and the amount of airflow I had was insane, this happened. Anyway, time to say goodbye to Vandaglossum Alexandra. She was beautiful while I had her, and I was very happy to see the blooms. Next up in the priority list of sadness is my Lelia Angareri. I got her from Floralia in 2021. She was the reason I placed the order. She was a rescue from day one. Most of Floralia's orchids are. And well, let me tell you, what would I do differently if I get another Angareri? Well, here's the thing. I would need to see the difference between the one I received and a new one that I may get, may not get. I don't know. Time will tell. To see if this one was healthy and I messed up or if the other one is healthy and there is not going to be any issues because she had quite large structures and I thought I would have plenty to work with. And sure enough, she did start growing a new growth but it never amounted to any roots. I was super hopeful when that eye started to swell. All the leaves were fine, the pseudobulbs were plump. So I have no idea in this case whether it was my wrongdoing or if the orchid as such was way too stressed and it just took too much effort to even produce this new growth. If I get another Angareri, my diagnosis of this one will definitely be much, much clearer based on what I may get to see next time around. Coming in at third place, too bad, so sad, Lelia Liliputana. Same order, so happy to get this little one. And she was doing okay not great but okay for the longest time even started to produce roots in this case what i believe was i got the watering wrong and i was trying to encourage more roots whereas some rupiculous lalias when they start their root growth just leave them alone 
don't water. It's like having a catacetinae and you water too soon. That is where I believe I went wrong. Saw roots, started to keep the surface of the media damp. Clearly there were no roots in the pot. There was no need to be flushing the pot or anything. That is when the roots objected. However, she still had plenty, plenty of structures. So I still had time to correct by mistake. She was doing okay and throwing out a second set of roots. And then came the mites, the thrips, whatever it was, she was on my worst shelf. Should have been the most protected shelf with lots of light, lots of airflow, all that supervision fun stuff that you do with orchids that you are trying to recover. Yeah, well, it turned out to be my worst shelf. It was affected by the mites, the thrips, and I couldn't get a grip on it. The tiny, tiny structures couldn't cope anymore. And the only reason she's in third place of too bad, so sad, is because <laughs> Angareri was the reason of the order. Lilliputana hitched a ride. But still, very disappointed to have lost this orchid. Number four. Too bad, so sad. Very sad. Mr. Cidium Capense from my Afri Orchids order. All the orchids were in great condition. I just didn't get it right with this one. I thought Orchid Top and Lava Rock would work perfectly, seeing as other and Grecoids in my collection are doing well in this setup. And yes, she did try. She grew two leaves. She also grew an aerial root, which I covered with a microfiber right here. And well, let me tell you something. That microfiber and the root, they didn't gel very well. I could keep it damp. I could keep it drier. I never let the microfiber really dry out because the root was an active growth. It was just a bad, bad error of judgment on my part. I would not buy this orchid again because I would not be able to cultivate it mounted. So this was a mistake. This was me overestimating my competence and I feel terrible. I really thought we stood a chance because, like I said, my Angrecoids in Orchid Top and Lava Rock, it has the mounted kind of setup without being mounted and plenty of humidity around the base. Had her in bright shade, yeah, big, big shame. My climate is too dry even for the setup I was trying to provide. So unfortunately, she will join the others. I am also closing the chapter on Signori's Jumbo Mickey. I got that completely wrong. I totally messed up what was a fabulous orchid by using too much time-release fertilizer in her pot on the repot when she needed it. So in the LECA and self-watering setup, there is the occasional flush throughout the winter when catacetinae are dormant. It works for other catacetinae, but my Jumbo Mickey, having recently been repotted, didn't have enough roots in the pot. They had been manhandled and mangled and the layman was damaged. So with the time-release fertilizer, when I did the occasional flush, as I normally do, it started to activate and then it wicked all the way to the surface. And in the new season, lo and behold, all the new roots that started to grow burnt. On top of that, I had new growths rotting out, so extra energy was then pushed into starting more new growths. She seemed to cope well with that, and I say seemed because clearly I just drained this orchid of all the energy that it had accumulated over the years prior with me, and yeah, this is the result. This piece right here declined pretty quickly after a thrips attack. That is just the nail in the coffin. There's only so much an orchid can take. And if you want the perfect storm of bad culture, misjudgment, then pest attack, well, I've got it all. It was a hat trick. And I thought this is gonna be okay. I had one piece still green up until two days ago. And well, we are closing the chapter on Signoche's Jumbo Mickey and I will not be replacing this orchid. Not because I don't like her, but because I've got others I need to concentrate and focus on. Too bad, so sad for my little Dendrobium peguanum. Whoa, I overstepped here completely. It's a wishlist orchid of mine. It was a huge, huge risk and I failed, unfortunately. Tiny little Dendrobium that prefers to be treated like a catacetinae as well. 
tiny little roots, tiny structures. When it grows, don't water, don't mist. Uh, yeah, it needs a lot more humidity than I could provide. My ninja mounts here, the hybrid, was definitely not adequate. I had it down as well by my worst shelf ever because, you know, airflow above a humidity tray, misting around the edges, you name it, I tried it. Uh, I feel like an idiot, to be honest with you, because I should never, ever have purchased this orchid. But when I saw it, because it's so hard to find, <laughs> probably because people like me keep doing this to it, yeah, I had to have it and I feel horrible. I feel absolutely horrible. But anyway, little one, yeah, poor thing. Never stood a chance. I should have known better and my stubbornness once again taught me that <laughs> later you should listen to the gut you have more because <laughs> it's big enough so use it and the last one for this go around yes emphasis on this go around because it's not going to be the last going going gone video ever on my channel of that i am certain but this is the fire spike propagation attempt numero tres, which was a fail with the gravel. Not phased by this at all. I have tried many different ways. I've been extremely patient. <laughs> Big quality for an orchid grower. And I actually do have a propagation attempt that was successful in Akadama, so this one doesn't hurt. If I were to do this again, I would use Akadama, but let me tell you, I am not doing any more. It's not that it's a hassle, it's just my environment. And what I have at my disposition, it's not conducive to doing this successfully year in year out so after three attempts i have one little node that is growing little plantlets we're going to work on those so there we have it and in between the clips i did sort out my lava rock which was the pet method for the jumbo mickey and i left my organics in here i don't want anybody to think i'm binning everything together i'm trying to be very very cautious and everything that I can reuse is back on the top. Yes, I will be reusing this mount should needs arise because Peguanum was not in my collection long enough to really make a difference on that mount. It is reusable. I'm feeling the sting. You see, while my orchids decline, I'm already upset. I have plenty of time of watching an orchid decline while I'm in the process of trying to save it, to make peace with the situation, to go through the analysis in my head and all those phases I deal with. So it is not that I'm like, yay, they're gone, but I am so glad they are gone because not being able to intervene, waiting for others to decline because you know it's about to happen and then, you know, you want to film it, you want to explain yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, somehow this closing of a chapter thing, doing a video, you know, it brings it all back, but not to the degree where I'm like going to be huddled in a corner sobbing, needing somebody to hold my hand until I get over it. That's not the case. I'm relieved this is done. That is all I can say. Did you enjoy the video? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Sometimes these videos can be very entertaining, but they can also include little tidbits of information that may actually register and resonate with someone, especially when it comes to stubbornness. Careful, listen to your gut. If it's telling you something, there is a reason, and then analyze that reason. But you know what? This is not gonna be the last time I'm gonna make that mistakes because the eyes are always bigger than the stomach. <laughs> get it, get it? Anyway, thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope you have yourself a beautiful day. Take care, bye.